Light Finance, the world of financial freedom. Hello, it's Monday. It's time to start the market forecast. So this week is packed with many key data publications starting already today. You will have central banks, interest rate decisions, PMIs, OPEC meeting, you name it. So let's begin as usual with a macro calendar and then we will uh, dig into deeper analysis of Golden this time. So stay tuned. Okay, so today we have a tank and large manufacturing and non-manufacturing index from Japan and manufacturing PMIs from key economies, namely Germany, the Eurozone as a whole, UK and the US. Next is a Tuesday with an interest rate decision early in the morning from Australia where another half percent hike is forecasted by the consensus of analysts and inflation data from Japan. On Wednesday we will get retail sales from Australia, rate decision this time from New Zealand, services PMIs again from Germany, Eurozone, UK and the US, and on Wednesday also OPEC will hold a meeting and we will get crude oil inventories. Thursday is a rather calm day, we will get an initial jobless claim from the US and IV PMI from Canada. Friday should be a good day with good volatility. We will get manufacturing PMIs from China and NFPs, which will as always move the market, but this time it may be a rather smaller impact since currently it is not the gauge the Fed relies the most right now. It will rather influence stock prices since it will show if all the other bad data and signals from the economy are materializing since, since it is a lagging indicator. It is not forecasting anything rather than showing what already happened. Okay, and now let's move on to the gold. The Fed has already punished the financial markets twice for their intention to go against it. When the Bank of England stepped in, investors backed off. One bullion pound was enough to scare bond sellers around the world. As a result, the yield on 10-year treasury bonds are trying to consolidate above the psychological level of 4%. Gold has benefited the most. Having almost reached the target of 1600 per ounce, the precious metal rose sharply. The XIU USD is highly sensitive to the dynamics of the US dollar and treasury rates. As a result, the greenbacks rally to 20 year high and the rise in 10 year bond yields to their highest since 2010 seriously affected gold's position. Specialized ETF holdings have fallen to their lowest levels since May 2020, while bullish speculative gold rates have fallen to their lowest since November 2018. When there are too many bears in the market, it can easily reverse. As soon as something happens that can weaken the USD and contribute to the decrease in treasury bond yields, gold sellers immediately exit short trades and take profits. Such an event was the renewal of the one-pound QE program by the Bank of England. Andrew Bailey and his colleagues are ready to increase the figure to $65 billion. The external background remains unfavorable for the precious metal. The drop in applications for unemployment benefits, rising underlying orders for durable, durable goods and strong personal consumption data suggest that the US economy is still strong and ready to endure the Fed's aggressive monetary tightening. The Fed wants to cool the labor market, but it remains red hot still. All that's left is to raise the stakes. No one is surprised when such FOMC hoax as James Bullard and Loretta Master talk about their growth to 5%. However, when Dovish San Francisco Fed President Mary Daly states this, it is worth considering a little more deeply. In my opinion, gold might outpace the market. It gives wishful thinking just like the US stock market in the first half of August and September. Also, the oversold factor, including excessive bearish rates in the futures market and the outflow of capital from specialized ETFs, has its effect. And so if the Fed raises the federal funds rate to 5%, the yield on 10-year Treasury US will also reach this figure. Now there is a correction in the Treasury and gold market and it allows the traders to enter gold shorts when the price rebounds from key resistance near 1677 and 1692 and 1712 per ounce. So overall, the direction is south. And so, okay, that is all for today. Thank you for watching and till next time, guys. Bye.